What is up everybody? This is sort of a repeat of a video, but not really. A while back I made a video about ISO mistakes you are probably making on your Panasonic Micro Four Thirds camera. And today we are making a video on ISO mistakes you're maybe, probably making on your S series cameras. So S1, S1H, S5, all the S series full frame Panasonic cameras, ISO mistakes that you might be doing that you might want to avoid. So check this video out and going right into the first one is using extended ISO. Now, I am fairly against using this extended ISO, which you can turn on in the menus and it basically lets you go under the low base ISO. It lets you go over the max ISO. And I'm gonna admit right away that this can be helpful and even essential. If you're shooting faster than f2.8 in bright sunlight, you probably can't get a great exposure on your photos. If you're shooting video you re and don't have an ND filter, the low base ISO, especially in stuff like vlog, is really going to suffer. The problem is with this extended ISO, especially on the low end, all this is really doing is just artificially crushing the mid and dark tones of your image. And the problem with that is it's just destroys your highlight roll off. It's just like a digital sharp edge and it's not great, especially for photos. In video, it doesn't look good either, but it's a little bit more acceptable. Again, if you're in an emergency situation, I would leave this on, but don't think you're getting like the ultimate clear images just because you're using the lowest base ISO. I do have to admit that photos shot in RAW are a lot less effective than JPEGs or videos, although you still do lose a little bit, maybe a half a stop or a stop of highlight detail, as you can see here when we switch to the ISO 100 version. So it's not as bad in RAW, but it still could be better. And this leads me to my next point. Speaking of nailing exposure, yeah, nail your exposure. A lot of people are like, why is my Panasonic footage so noisy? And then they post images that are clearly like a stop underexposed. Now, I understand that dark moody look is really nice. And a lot of people really wanna go for it, but the typical way you wanna handle that is to expose properly and then bring it down in post just to get those clean shadows. Now, I understand that's not always doable, but exposing right on the money or to the right even and bringing it down to a proper level is way more appropriate. So yeah, even if you're shooting at ISO 100, ISO 200, but your exposure is totally off, then you're gonna have issues with noise, especially in those shadows. Let's take a break real quick and do a photography tip. Now, there is a few ways around this, but Here's the headline feature. If you're using profiles like HLG, CineV, CineD, and especially Vlog in video mode and you switch to photography, well, those profiles are still gonna be applied. And if you take a photo in those modes, of course you're still gonna get the raw image. Well, first off, if you shoot just JPEG with Vlog, then it's a whole different story. But if you shoot raw, your raw images are still gonna be raw images, but because of how the camera interprets that data, they're gonna be a full stop underexposed if you expose them using the V-Log profile or some of these other ones. Now that's an issue because you're gonna to have to raise up the exposure in post and it's gonna introduce more noise and it's just gonna be an extra step you have to take. So yeah, definitely be very careful and use the standard or natural or something along those lines for photography because otherwise photos are gonna be a full stop underexposed. Speaking of those color profiles and something you probably already know about these cameras is all of them have dual gain sensors, which means they have a low gain at like 400 or 640 and then a high at 4000. And so theoretically, the ISO and color performance is gonna be essentially identical between the low and high ISOs, which makes them really great in low light. The problem here is that those numbers are different based on your color profile. You're in standard or neutral, here's one. You're in Cine D, here's another one. You're in HLG, here's a third one. You're in Vlog, here's a fourth one. And it's a lot to keep in mind. You might wanna print something out and stick it to your camera or just really memorize the ISO values that 
are in the profiles you use the most. But the issues here come from not knowing those base ISOs to get the cleanest possible images. So keep in mind what profile you're gonna use and try to remember which ISOs work best in those modes. The other one would be something more specific for using the automatic gain in the S1H or just the S5 doesn't have the option to choose low and high and limit it. So when using those, it's really easy to fall into the trap of just picking an exposure and hoping the camera does whatever for you. The problem is, if you're at 3200 ISO, you're getting significantly worse performance than at 4000 ISO in vlog anyway. So yeah, definitely keep those ISOs in mind. And if you're shooting 2500 or 3200, um, you may as well just bump it up that little bit more to 4,000 and you'll get, not infinitely, but, you know, one or two or three stops better noise performance, which definitely can make a difference, especially considering all the other factors of like underexposing and things like that. Another thing is that auto ISO can definitely mess you up more on these cameras than others. So instead of just like a, a smooth ramp up in noise, say you're shooting a play or a live event where lighting's uncontrolled, you don't know what you're going to expect. If your camera, say like in vlog, is flip-flopping between 3200 and 4000, the noise is just gonna sort of pop in and out as that just tiny little third of a stop increment happens. And so probably not the biggest deal ever, probably not gonna come up super often. You're probably only using auto ISO less than 10% of the time, but it's just something to note that using auto ISO can kind of mess you up in cameras like the S5 where you don't have that ability to choose from the low and the high gain switch. Hey, editing Rhett here. Uh, I just have my S5 here and I have one particular tip about the S5. So the low ISO, like so in Vlog 640 and the high ISO 4000 on most of the other S series cameras seems to be more or less interchangeable, but on the S5 here, it does seem to be just a little bit worse at 4000 when compared to the low base ISO of 640. So you might be getting something like a 1250 or a 1600 ISO type noise pattern at 4000. Probably not the biggest deal, but I figured it was worth mentioning in this video that the S5 at the high base ISO seems to be slightly worse than the other full frame cameras, but it's pretty minor, honestly, at the end of the day. One good way to get exposure, by the way, is on the newer Panasonic cameras. Well, I guess all the S-Series has this, I'm pretty sure, is the luminance spot meter. Get a gray card out, put it in front of the camera, turn that luminance spot meter on, and once it says zero, you're pretty much set to go and have proper skin tone exposure. Um, obviously, that's not the end all be all, but it's a really quick and easy way to get a proper exposure by using that luminance spot meter or even using something like dual, the dual zebras where you can set a really, anyway, I'll, I'll link a video up to how to do that. But time for the final issue. And I actually have a couple videos about this in the past, but don't assume that the APS-C mode is the same as the full frame modes. So if you're using an APS-C lens on the S-series cameras, so Sigma 18 to 50, have a review for it, the Sigma 1.4 budget contemporary primes, or just adapting something like the Sigma 18 to 35. Oh, and using 4K60, every 4K60 mode has that forced 1.5 times crop. And what that means is your noise is going to appear 1.5 times bigger, more or less. And so that enhanced and exaggerated noise even at the same ISO values, you know, you're shooting at ISO 640 in V-Log, you're shooting at ISO 4000 in V-Log. Punching in to an APS-C sized image circle on this full frame sensor will give you worse results objectively. Now, how much that actually affects the image in reality, it's kind of going to be up to you. But at the end of the day, it's something to keep in mind. It's, it's like this APS-C mode will cause worse noise. It will exaggerate the noise that is there. And so you can't just say in your head, well, APS-C full frame on these cameras is the same. It does have a negative impact on the noise performance. So just keep that in mind. And just like in my previous ISO video, this is my final tip for ISO, which is 
You know, ISO can't hurt you if you don't let it. Don't pixel peep. Don't care too much. Don't obsess over it. Yes, ISO, noise, things like that is an issue and it does degrade your image quality, but cameras these days are so good that you can have a little bit of wiggle room. And at the end of the day, most normal people don't care or don't even know what grain is, what noise is, things like that. That doesn't mean just go crazy, but at the end of the day, obsessing over these fine detail noise and like the shadows of your ungraded vlog image isn't super helpful and you know, it's it's just not worth spending all this time dedicated to it, you know? Try to keep these tips in mind that I've gone over, watching that low ISO value, watching which native ISO works at what level and what color profile exposed to the right, whatever. But if a pure black chalkboard in your shot has some noise in it, in the background while you're shooting log before you grade it, it's probably not the biggest deal. Um, again, it's up to you. Everybody's threshold for noise is gonna be different, but those are my ISO mistakes, and I hope they help you in your future productions. Get out there, go shoot something. Thanks for stopping by. And if you like this video, you know all the stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, does it help? No one knows. And if you did subscribe, I'll see you guys in the next video, which could be S-series, could be Micro Four Thirds. Panasonic could be sending me the GH6 finally. They aren't, but they, well, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, guys, see ya.